We are on the border between Leslieville and Riverside South. Our clients are Shane and Al, who are a wonderful couple uh, that are near and dear friends of ours. Funny story is they actually came to our housewarming when we bought our place about four years ago and saw it after we had done our sort of phase one of our reno. And, you know, as a good host, we went over to make sure everything was okay. And they were actually like, no, no, we're great. We're actually admiring your place and we really want you to design ours. So it was very humbling and exciting also to have someone who wanted more or less my style, but with their personality and some of their own touches to it. Entertaining was probably the biggest wish list directive, I would say. I was all about how can we increase the flow for parties. Typical Victorian home, it had an entrance vestibule with a separate door system from the hallway to sort of block in any drafts in the cold weather months. It was closed off and not connected to the rest of the home. So we removed that wall entirely, but replaced it with a glass and black metal double door system to still let the light through, expand the space visually, but also retain the function of protecting the interior from the drafts in the cold winter months. And from there, I found this beautiful floor tile from Allison Rose, and it has green marble calicata viola with its beautiful burgundy purple veining and a bit of black and some calicata gold through it as well. So it has a beautiful mixture of different palettes and colors that really then became the jumping off place for the rest of the home. The front living room was relatively unchanged in size. We did open up a couple of the doorways from the hallway into the living room, as well as the doorway between the living and the dining space. The one between the living and dining room actually had like old verging on colonial columns. Like it was, it was a hodgepodge of architectural style, shall we say. So it was bringing it back to the original Victorian era and feel of the home. A lot of the moldings throughout had been replaced or stripped back over the years. So all of the moldings in the space, although they feel original and authentic, they're actually all new and put back during the renovation. So in that front living room, we didn't change a lot. The size more or less was the same, but the dining room, we did do extensive renovation to opening up that space. We opened up the wall between the dining room and the hallway to allow for an increased flow, especially during those larger holiday meals or cocktail parties. But we still wanted to retain the character of a Victorian era home by having actual walls and structure. We didn't want it to feel like a blown out, open, all one big contemporary space. So we still retained the header above, cased it out in the trim work to still have a doorway feel. So there is some definition between the dining room and the hallway, but there's a lot of openness in terms of floor space. So you can easily pack a bunch of people in there or extend the table if need be. In this home, there were a lot of radiators as well throughout the space that are necessary for heat, but not necessarily the most attractive to always look at. So we did a lot of built-ins in the living dining to conceal the radiators and then integrated storage above that so that there's additional storage in the dining room. There's a built-in that actually houses all of the glassware that's within arm's reach of the cocktail bar. The cocktail bar under the stairs used to actually be the entrance to the basement. When the clients purchased the home, the basement was converted to a rental apartment. So there is no need to access the basement from the main floor. So we closed off the entrance to the basement, put in built-in storage under the stairs for shoes, mitts and gloves. And then we built in a cocktail bar complete with a beverage fridge and alcohol cabinet. One of their other wish lists or directives for the project was to have some South Asian influences throughout the space. So if you zoom in closely, the elephants are different characters from Sanskrit epics and sort of have a Bollywood influence as well, which was really near and dear to the clients. There were a lot of really awkward obstacles and ceiling heights in the kitchen. So the solution to that was built-in cabinetry to sort of disguise some of the ins and outs of the wall. There were a lot of jogs, you know, plus minus a couple inches, as well as enveloping that entire space in a dark, moody, neutral green. It really just draws your eye away from any of those obstacles or eyesores, shall we call them, and down to the lighter, brighter surfaces being the Arabescato marble porcelain countertops and the white oak herringbone floors. I have a real passion for English-inspired framed kitchens, as well as built-in concealed everything. So I'm not a fan of seeing fridges or dishwashers. I like to hide bar fridges. Al, one of our wonderful clients, manages a group of restaurants. So it was really important to him to have a space in his own home where he can sort of recreate his love of food for his guests and friends and family. Being a galley kitchen, you know, it's quite narrow and you have sort of two runs of cabinetry to work with. 
but you're constantly crossing back and forth. And in this case, we have a main walkway or through fair to the backyard through the kitchen. So it created a lot of congestion or what I like to call kitchen accidents where you run into each other or you bump into someone walking by you. So we put all of the necessities for a chef like Al along the one wall so that he can really move laterally rather than back and forth across the kitchen. So it increases his workflow and function and also minimizes any of those bumps or accidents that can happen. The powder room before was a three-piece bathroom. It had a clawfoot tub, as well as a pedestal sink and a toilet, all in a space of about five feet by five feet. So the size of most people's powder rooms, we had almost a full bathroom. Not necessary on the main floor. So first thing we did was remove the tub and convert it to a proper powder room with two-piece. We did a floating lilac marble vanity that's reminiscent of the jacaranda tree with its beautiful dark veining and soft lilac hues into the stone and did a Nero Marquino tumbled marble that has this sort of reminiscent history there where it feels like it's something that could have been in the house long before, as well as the wallpaper in there, again, bringing through the South Asian influences with this beautiful dramatic peacock wallpaper that symbolizes the national bird of India. On the second floor, we have an office that was previously actually a four-piece bathroom and the office space was what is currently now the spa bathroom. So we did a bit of a flip there where we brought the office to the back of the house where there's more natural light, has the terrace, air client chain. Often we'll have Zoom meetings or in-person client meetings. So we wanted to give him a space that could double for both. So he has a beautiful Zoom background behind him with the deep dark blue walls, as well as the outdoor space and a couple of chairs for visitors if he does have meetings in person in the office. The bar, I mean, what office is complete without a bar? <laughs> and again, back to my love of built-in millwork to hide and organize everything in your life. We have, again, another radiator in this beautiful old home. We did a full built-in floor to ceiling to not only conceal the radiator, but also give us a bit of storage for a concealed cocktail bar and coffee bar. So at the end of the day, whatever your bevy is of choice, there's something in there for you. The spa bathroom, the clients wanted to have the steam shower and a separate freestanding tub. So we took over actually the closet that belongs to the room that we're sitting in here, which is the TV lounge, and added that space to the spa bathroom to allow us to have that freestanding tub in the middle. Unlike the rest of the house, the color palette in there is a lot more soothing and calm. We went for a beautiful sort of taupey gray hue from Ferro and Ball called Worsted, which gives just a soft, serene feel to that space. And then we amped it up with a bit of color. The beautiful lady portrait hanging above the tub was actually in the client's dining room when we first saw the space. And as soon as I saw it, I knew that that piece was meant to be in the spa bath, sort of front and center over the tub. And it was the lady of the house, shall we say. We're sitting here in the TV lounge. This room didn't change a lot in terms of size of the space, but the orientation changed quite a bit. Previously, the sofa was in front of the window. The room is more rectangular and long and narrow. So the sofa being in the middle of the long wall felt very tight and sort of cramped in here. So we went with the shape of the room and went with that elongating feeling of putting the TV on the shorter wall and the couch opposite it with this beautiful palace mural behind me, reminiscent of, again, an Indian palace uh, to bring in the South Asian influences. And I'm not opposed to white or light spaces, but I definitely am someone who appreciates and yearns for drama and boldness. So, you know, whether that be through a black and white space that's very high in contrast, or a space that's very sophisticated with its use of colors. I love jewel tones and those deep saturated hues of the aubergine and the studio green color that we used in the kitchen. Uh, but it was just so lovely to have clients that were very trusting of the vision and at the end are beyond excited and ecstatic to show off their home and have had multiple parties since we completed the reno.